Hello everyone. Let's continue our discussion with a physical design flow overview. So once we have done with floor planning stage, the next step is to actually place and route the entire design. So for that what we have done is we have taken an example of a netlist. So for example this particular netlist does some functionality. We have not defined the functionality over here. But this particular netlist does some functionality. And our job is to pl place and route this particular design onto a complete chip. So basically we have to we have to make a chip out of this particular design so that this particular design is physically realizable or basically this particular design when implemented on a chip or on a mic or on a mobile phone or, or or any kind of device it does some amount of functionality that's how we have to design currently what you see you see this thin lines which are nothing but wires you see you see this not gate which is which has a particular shape you see this and gate which has got a particular shape and and so on but in reality these shapes are no more valid in reality these are just a representational of this particular of, of this particular gates so for example anything which which with this kind of shape represents an and gate anything which uh, with with this kind of shape represents an or gate it's just a representation of this particular gates in reality all these will be like square boxes so first of all what we have to do is we have to assign some dimensions to these particular gates that's what we have said over here bind the netlist with physical cells so what you see over here is a logical connection between the gates we have to bind this particular thing with a physical view so it's it looks something like this so basically you take each and every element from your netlist and give it a proper shape and size for example the flip flop one is now given a it, it was always always a square shape let's say for example the one so one uh, the gate which is one for example the one gate was a not gate it has been given a square shape over here okay the gate which is two which is an and gate also has been given a square shape over here so either it could be a square or a rectangle but there has to be a physical dimensions of this particular of this particular cells that uh, it, it can't be an and gate it, it, it is no more an and gate with a shape that was defined over here but it's an and gate with a shape which is something like this and it might have got pins somewhere on the top of it where the where, which represents the input pins and the output pins so this is basically defined in a, this all binding of the netlist with physical cells are all very well defined in us in, in a in a uh, in a set called as library it's it's a huge it's a huge place where you actually store all your library where you where you store all your standard cells it's just like a books it's just like a library of books you have a library where you have got a lot of a lot of books in similar to that you have got a library where you have each where you have the definition of each and every standard cell so this could be considered as a library of gates and from this particular gates so you have this library you have this particular netlist you just take the name from this you uh, take the name of this particular gate which is an and gate find out the and gate from the library and then use this square box for henceforth for your placement and route so that's what it's meant by binding the netlist with the physical cells okay so that was the first step we'll we'll go into details of of everything and how does it look like whether it's always a square shape or it can be a rectangular shape whether the area of the cell remains same or not we'll talk about all those when we go into details of this one let's now uh, keep our discussion to this uh, this limit where we say that we have the first step in the physical in in pnr or uh, placement and route step is to bind the logical netlist to a physical phys physical one okay that's the first step second step is to do a placement so now once you have the you have these shapes and sizes of this particular cells the next step is to place these cells on on the chip to identify some some uh, some locations for this particular cell for example flip flop one is close to d in one so it makes complete sense to keep flip flop one close to d in one okay for example flip flop one is close to d in four so it may it so and in this case we have a restriction that we have got we have already placed this complete macro a set of macro or pre-placed cells somewhere over here but the closest distance that d in four that flip flop one can find is d in four it could have been placed over here but it would be very close to this cell and there are there are uh, there are problems when we place two cells close to each other the the problem is basically there will be routes growing from this point to this point and the flip flop one if it if it is sitting over here the the output of this particular logic which is d out 4 d out 4 is somewhere over here so flip flop one has to travel from this part entirely from this part till this part and there are problems associated with that basically there are too many routes and that routes might lead might interfere with the other routes and, and so, on. so there are problems 
we had find we have found an optimal way to to place this particular flip flop over here and there is a problem while facing a flip flop over here the problem is it's too far from d in 4 so we have to find out a way that the signal which is sent from d in 4 reaches the reaches the flip flop one input with the same size and shape so we'll look into that in some time from now which it, it just uh, about to come in the next slides so the next step is to place the cells take the cells from your netlist bind it to the physical cells and place it on the chip wherever we find the appropriate location okay for example flip flop 2 which is close to d out 3 is being placed over here flip flop 2 which is close to d out 3 okay but this placement might not be the optimal placement for our design and why not optimal for example let's take another example where we have d into which is close to flip flop 1 so over here d into is placed over here and it's it, it is it is far it is at a far distance from flip flop 1 so we have to do something to uh, for the signal from this point to this point to reach to, to, uh, for, uh, for the signal to reach from D in 2 to flip flop 1 with the same shape so there should not be any there should not be degradation of the signal which is sent from D in 2 to uh, flip flop 1 it's basically uh, any signal uh, uh, some person which is sitting over here who is shouting the voice should reach flip flop 1 at the uh, without, without any deterioration that's what the intent is similarly the signal should reach from this point to this point without any deterioration and and the and the next step actually does that the next step is the optimized placement so when we say optimized placement it is a stage where we estimate the wire length for example a wire length from d into to flip flop one could be could be some number and with the based on based on that estimation we identify that what could be the degradation in the signal that is being sent from d into to flip flop one and based on to based on that degradation we insert repeaters so repeater are basically signal conditioners they will take the signal from d into they will condition it and reconstruct the original signal and send it ahead the buffer will this particular repeater will again take the input from this buffer it will reconstruct it and send the signal in its original shape to the flip flop one and this is how you do it in op in optimized placement stage and similarly if you see there is a buffer over here so the signal which is sent from d in 4 is sent to bu buffer buffer does a signal condition of this of this particular waveform which is coming at the input of the buffer it does a signal condition of it it reconstructs the original waveform and then sends it to flip flop one so this step is basically called as optimized placement and it and the and the re repeater insertion is not is not re required for for every one of them for example if you see d in 1 to flip flop one the wire length is very small so there is no need of repeater over here whatever signal you see uh, see over here it will be very well constructed at the input of the flip flop one okay so that's the that's what we do with the optimized placement stage similarly if you see this if if you see uh, uh, this particular this particular stage for example flip flop 1 to flip flop 2 to d out from d in 4 to d out 4 d in 4 lies somewhere over here d out 4 lies somewhere over here along the path you have you, you will see a lot of buffers which is placed over here okay so you have the signal which is coming from d in 4 enters the buffer and enters the flip flop one so there is a signal amount of a significant amount of signal conditioning been done from flip flop one this there is no buffer between flip flop one and one and the reason is the the estimated wire length is is, is a bit small but there is there is again there is again exception to this this wire might actually get routed from this area and come over here and that that is what will be taking care of while optimizing routing right now we, we are just estimating the wire length and doing a placement based on that or optimizing the placement based on that okay from this one to this two the distance is a bit huge and that's why the uh, the, the wire length is a bit huge and that's why you see a buffer being placed over here and from two to flip flop two that the estimated wire length is small and from flip flop two to d out four the estimated wire length is small so you don't need a buffer over here and over here okay so this was the uh, this was uh, the optimized placement the first level of optimization that we have done with this particular netlist with this particular placement itself it's a very good step to do a timing analysis uh, an, uh, uh, an ideal clock timing analysis of the existing placement so that will give an idea of what the circuit is or what the timing is going to look like so what we'll do since this is uh, this top this uh, section will this uh, section will need a bit of discussion so let's try to uh, let's and, and since i'm already running out of time let's try to do all this in the next video thank you